welcome lovely viewers to the news desk on full time bus tv keep watching as we bring you a roundup of the week's special events across the globe we'll be right back Back, lovely viewers. In the main headline, working women in Afghanistan have been ordered to stay at home until proper systems are in place to ensure their protection. Here is a story. The Taliban, which enforced a strict version of Islamic law in the run Afghanistan before 2001, retook full control of the country recently. The UN has highlighted credible reports of abuses by the Taliban, notably restrictions on women. Taliban spokesperson said any restrictions on Afghan women will be short-lived. He was quoted as saying Taliban security forces are not trained to deal with women on how to speak to women and for some of them, until they have full security in place, women are asked to stay home. UN Human Rights Commissioner said on Tuesday that women's rights were a fundamental red line. In his news conference in Kabul, the Taliban spokesman also addressed the U.S.-led evacuation from the capital, Kabul. He added Afghans should not try to go to the airport due to the critical situation there, urging the U.S. should stop encouraging them to leave as Afghanistan needs their talents. The U.K., France and Germany have called for an extension to the 31st August deadline set by the U.S. to leave Afghanistan, but U.K. Defense Secretary Ben Wallace has admitted that President Joe Biden is unlikely to extend the deadline. As regards the U.S. troops controlling Kabul airport from where some 58,700 people have since been evacuated, the spokesperson reaffirmed Taliban's position that the operation should end by August 31st. Meanwhile, on the highway towards Afghanistan's second biggest city of Kandahar, a long line of green armored fighting vehicles drove in single file down most with white and black Taliban flags attached to aerials. Fighters manned the controls of the multi-purpose trucks used by U.S., NATO and Afghan forces during the two-decade war, while others clamored over the vehicles at the town on the outskirts of the city. In other news, all government and private schools in the state of Kuwait are to reopen on October 3 after implementing the online learning system for almost 18 months. Kuwait Ministry of Education, represented by the private education sector, has prepared a plan for students to return to the traditional method of learning in various private schools in the coming academic year. According to the plan, the working hours of private Arab schools will be the same as that of the government schools announced by the Minister of Education, Dr. Ali Ahmadav. All private schools will reopen on October 3rd, coinciding with the return of students in government schools. However, the online system will remain in place until the end of September for private schools, which start their year early, citing the Pakistani, Indian, English and American schools, depending on each school's plan. The ministry has allocated an introductory educational period to prepare the students for the next academic year. Any private school that has not passed the stages of health rehabilitation will not be allowed to reopen. Legally prescribed measures will be taken against it as well. A work team will be assigned to each school to implement the health requirements, and the ministry will monitor each school's implementation of the health requirements. The decision to reorganize the school fees will continue with the deduction of 25% of the fees for those schools that are unable to reopen schools for students for reasons related to their inability to provide sufficient numbers of the educational staff. All schools have been urged to vaccinate their employees with the approved vaccines as well as urge students whose ages read between 12 and 16 years to get vaccinated. The teaching methods for the 2021-2022 academic year will be according to the traditional education system that depends on the comprehensive return of all students with a focus on student density. It will be divided into two parts in private schools according to the educational system. 
schools with low student density and those with high student density. Classes with low student density will have less than 25 students per classroom and anything higher than that is considered as high density. According to sources, the schools with low student density are those that are allowed to reopen completely and in full capacity throughout the week with a full school day system, provided that the maximum number of students in one classroom does not exceed 20 students. Private schools with a high student density will be allowed to reopen, but the students will be divided into two groups. The plan includes a clause indicating that the study plans for schools that do not fit in this plan will be considered through flexible mechanisms that achieve the general... Meanwhile, Ghana's Minister of Communication, Osla Oswekufo, says the registration of mobile SIM cards is expected to resume on 1st October 2021. A similar exercise was organized in June 2020, and here is the full story. The exercise is expected to last for six months and will end on 31st March 2022. Statement added that any SIM unregistered at the end of the March 31 deadline will be blocked. Minister Osla Ousuekufo disclosed this in a Facebook post recently. Meanwhile, in a bid to read the country's cyberspace of fraud and monitor and track down persons who use their phones for criminal activities, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia, in a recent statement to the press, said that plans are underway to ensure all Ghanaians with SIM cards re-register them using the National Identification Card, known as the Ghana Card. Speaking at the Faith Ghana CEO Summit in Accra, the Vice President noted that any individual who fails to take part in the exercise risks losing his or her SIM card. However, the move has been criticized by the minority leader, Harun Idrisu, who argues that undertaking such a registration of SIM card will not solve the issue of mobile money fraud as expected by Dr. Baumia. He said the vice president is ill-informed, inept and highly naive with that assumption since the solution to the challenge of fraud within the electronic money ecosystem goes beyond SIM registration. They are of the view that the mandatory re-registration of SIM cards provides no substantial benefit in the fight against electronic money fraud and the project will face practical challenges such as inbound travelers who require a SIM card without the national ID. And finally, four suspected separatists in Cameroon's troubled Anglophone regions have been sentenced to death over the killing of seven school children, the Defense Ministry announced on Friday. Here's the full story. A military court sentenced the four to execution in public by a firing squad. The seven children, aged between 9 and 12, were killed in October last year when armed men opened fire on the Asko in Kumba in the southwest region, one of the two western regions gripped by a long-running breakaway campaign. The four defendants were sentenced by a military tribunal in the regional capital of Boya for acts of terrorism hostility towards the motherland, insurrection, and murder, the ministry said. Western Cameroon is in the grip of a four-year-old conflict triggered by militants demanding independence for the two predominantly English-speaking regions in the Francophone majority state. More than 3,500 people have been killed and over 700,000 fleeing their homes. Rights Group says abuses have been committed by both separatists and the armed forces. Several death sentences have been issued against separatists in past years, although no execution has been carried out in Cameroon for more than two decades. The former German possession of Cameroon was partitioned between Britain and France after First World War. In 1961, part of the British territory the Southern Cameroons joined Cameroon after it gained independence from France. Anglophones have repeatedly complained about perceived discrimination at the hands of the Francophone majority, especially in education and law. Demands for reform and local autonomy were rejected by Cameroon's veteran president, 
Pobia are culminating in the separatist declaration of independence on October 1, 2017. However, their self-declared entity, Ambazonia, is sadly not recognized by the international community. Thank you so much for watching News Desk on Full Time Bus TV. I'm your lady Grace. Keep watching and don't forget to share, like and comment. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. God bless you. Bye-bye.